Hey hey, it's Scott Norris here from virtualizeme.net that are you? Just here today to talk about VRA 7.2 and the containers portion. It's one of the many things on a very long list I've been meaning to knock off. Uh, put a bit more uh, time into the blog. I've uh, been working pretty hard. I guess that's the uh, the business that we're in. So let's have a look at the container section that was uh, beta in 7.1 but it's obviously uh, now been released and I think it's pretty cool so from the get-go you'll actually have two blueprints that are at your disposal so these are the docker photon OS and the docker core OS now obviously put your own images to these but what is cool uh, and it's all in the documentation is that the properties that you can put on here specifically all these allow it to, especially the container app dot container, allows it to be when you provision this, it automatically gets deployed as a Docker container for the Docker portion of VRA. So if you have a look at containers, I have my host here. Now what I can easily do is go to my catalog. I can go to my Docker host and I can request uh, Photon OS. And that would, if that was successful, it would be you know Photon 006. Let's submit that, and it might be done while we're doing this video. So let's have a look at what I want to have a look at is creating uh, a multi-tiered uh, container blueprint. Now we can do everything from this container section, we can provision, we can delete, we can do a whole bunch of really cool stuff. But let's go um, look at the templates. So we can see under resources that I've got a whole bunch of containers three uh, already. Uh, we've got some docker hosts, we've got some placements, so they're like your resource pools, your uh, reservations, uh, if you will, and we'll have a look at the templates. So without putting, I haven't put my own repository here, this is just coming all from uh, the docker hub online, and that's where it pulls it down. So today let's look at uh, doing WordPress. Uh, with a, a WordPress Docker container and a database Docker container and have them connected. So let's look at uh, WordPress. I'll grab that. So we could just provision that as it is, but I don't want to do that. I want to enter additional info and save it as a template. So that's what we have to do if we want to do anything. So we can see under basic we can create Docker links. Uh, they're being deprecated so best to stay clear if you don't necessarily need them. Uh, networking, this is where the cool stuff happens, so we can go network mode, so by default if nothing's put in here it goes to bridge, otherwise you can select that you only want the network within the host. Uh, we can give it a host name if we want a specific host name. Now for WordPress I'm going to go uh, something random, let's just go port 86 uh, going to port 80 on the container host in this particular instance, I can attach my volumes. So on the host path, uh, I can also uh, attach volumes from other containers uh, if, if I wanted to. Or my working directory for where my scripts and everything are going to run. Uh, we can set policy. So we've got deployment policies. I've got one in place. You don't have to fill this in. Uh, deployment policy just allows it which reservation is going to go into, etc. Uh, we have a look at restart. Don't want to restart, cluster size, how many we want, how many restart CPU shares. Uh, let's go 30 for this. Uh, we'll put in a, a memory limit of 4. Uh, let's go 300, let's be stingy. It's only a home lab after all. And then we look at our environments. So obviously, with our, if you're familiar with containers, they usually require environment variables uh, that sort of pre configure or, or set up a certain portion of the, uh, the application we're trying to to use. So this is WordPress. I believe WordPress has got a number of them. So let's look at uh, WordPress DB host. We'll look at WordPress DB uh, user. Uh, let's just make these all real simple. We can go WordPress DB name. DB password. I think that's it for WordPress. Oh, there's probably other ones, but that's all I need. 
and we can configure our health config, what we want it to pull and log. I won't touch them today. We can go then save as a template and we can see, okay, let's create a network or a container, let's add another container. I want my database, so let's look at MariaDB. There it is. So again, exactly the same things. We want to uh, publish all ports, so without me putting anything, it's just going to dynamically allocate uh, a high, high number port and then map it to whatever the container is trying to publish. I believe the database is 3306. Uh, again, I'm going to leave that blank, storage blank, policy, I don't need, but let's go, uh, let's, give it a, let's give that 30 there and 300 as well. Uh, environment, so environment obviously we'll need, so I think it's uh, MySQL database so this is the database that it's going to set up on initial configuration uh, my SQL user SQL password. Now I also believe that it requires a root password to be configured. So I think it's my SQL random root password. And I think we set that to yes, because I don't really need to know it. Great, I'll add that. So I've got two containers there, we could keep adding more, but I want to add a network. So let's add, we can add a new one, which will create, but I think I've got a pre-existing one that I can, might be able to use. Uh, maybe not. It's okay, let's go. Uh, WordPress MariaDB Network Save Okay, there's my network there. We could have multiple networks and multiple connections and NICs and all the rest of it. Let's just drag these down and connect these up. Looks awesome. Now if we actually go into this we should see under the network, there's a network, so we could set up a bunch, but I'll just let it uh, allocate what it wants. Alright, so that's good. Now I could just go off and provision straight from here. I don't need to do anything else, but let's actually push it. Uh, let's go WordPress uh, multi. And we will push. Yep, so that pushed successfully. So it'll actually come through, there it is, as a new blueprint in draft mode. So we can have a look at it in the edit. This is great, we can see that, that looks awesome. We can actually create this from scratch if we wanted to by dragging out our container. Um, setting it up with uh, the image that we want and all the rest of it, but the other way so much easier to get the initial blueprint configured. So we can actually look at the MariaDB and we can see the, the image and everything's all set, um, the network's all in there, the environment variables are all in there. But what's really cool is that we can still do binding, just like we can with the application blueprints in VRA, is I want to know what my DB host is. So when that provisions, I want to know the name of it. So let's have a look at... Um, Binding, and we can look at resource MariaDB uh, name. So if we actually go back and have a look at um, oops, uh, MariaDB, we can see there's a lot of different things that we can bind to if we wanted to. Uh, so we can bind across, it's great, it's quite handy. I haven't looked at all of them, but resource, MariaDB. 
uh, anything with underscore resource if you can know is generally for stuff that's created at deployment time like an output uh, so we want the name so the name isn't known until deployment time so okay cool added that in there hopefully everything looks good let's uh, save that and then we'll publish we'll quickly throw that in the catalog probably got a whole bunch of WordPress, there it is we'll put that under container offerings ah, let's new and noteworthy yeah go to catalog oh, container offerings WordPress multi now we'll be able to see from here we can go into all the exact same stuff that we've picked we can see WordPress is going to have that in there, great. Alright, let's submit that. Now we could go into the request tab and actually see the execution as it runs. Nothing yet. There it is, it's in progress. So if they goes all through good, but we can actually go to the container section. Let's go out of that. And we can see them complete up here. Actually, let's see, we can see it's clicking up there. Let's see if that new host is there. I should just be able to hit rescan here. Oh, there it is. Docker 6. Awesome. Works like a charm. And that's just, if we go to my items all those docker hosts there are docker machines so I didn't do anything additional after I provisioned that last one that we saw I provisioned just for earlier docker 6 and it automatically adds it in which is great so that's going through let's have a look at this request see if it's all happy Oh, it's getting there. Sweet, done. Now let's look at the containers. And a resource containers. So we can see they've been running. Uh, Mario's been running slightly longer because it, WordPress had a dependency on it. Now we can actually look at these machines here. And you'll see when we go into these machines we get this nice new cool interface uh, with the log showing with our CPU and network and memory it's all looking good but let's actually go and have a look in our items in our deployments so we look at this because that's what if you're offering this as a service for people to consume this is most likely where you'd want them to use it now we look at Mario and we get the same interface which is awesome uh, we don't really need to worry about that too much, but then we look at WordPress, hopefully uh, that has all gone through. Right, it's using a lot of CPU, <laughs> and it looks like it's right, so I probably wouldn't be able to do the, what's it telling me, it's uh, couldn't determine fully qualified iron, that's cool, so it's using that, which I believe is what would have been the network IP address that's been given. Now let's go here, so this gives us a nice link. Let's click on that and see what we get. Awesome! We've got our WordPress site and put our username Oh, that's not our spelling name email kick that off. Now let's see what it's, uh, if we can refresh this and see what it's uh, doing. Oh, we can see the memory and the network going up. Let's have a look at the, the database. Alright, so we can 
See, that's working a little bit harder. Cool, log in. Actually, um, do I even choose a password? Oh, that's right, it gave it to me and I didn't copy it. There it is. Good old back and forward. Awesome. Sites up and running. Great. And from here, we can manage it. We can look at the logs. We can destroy. We can stop it. Uh, just like most uh, day two operations. So we can. Here, we can go up the top. We see a scale out. We can change lease. We can change owner. All the usual cool stuff about VRA. Uh, but from within the containers tab, you have the exact same thing. So we can we can see it running here, we can scale it, we can remove it, we can stop it, we can view it. All from within here, we can see the network, so that network we created, uh, which is this one, over here. So we can see the gateway, it's got two containers attached, so we can have a look at those two. There they are. It's running great. Now that Murray DB, how we put that name in there, let's have a look at five. So this is that Docker host that I think they're on. Yeah, Docker 05. Well there, so uh, Docker. So I'll be able to see them there, that's good. Let's just make this a little bit bigger so they all stay in one line, great. So I want to run a command in there, so in docker exec, I think it's it, and the name. So I want to have a look in WordPress, oh. and I want to run bash. So now we're in here. Now I just want to get the wp, I think, uh, config. .php. Just to see what the settings that it did put in there. Obviously I haven't changed this. And we can see the DB host. And there. From that linkage that we did. It's able to give us the DB host. Um, we can see yeah, WordPress, 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 which we put in manually, but that's the linkage. So that's the name. So 289417 should be the same name as this one up there. Awesome. All work to treat. Obviously, it wouldn't have uh, started if it wasn't. And that's it for a nice quick overview of how to do containers within a blueprint using a bit of linkage there. Uh, it's a good start, and I look forward to seeing what are uh, newer features uh, in later rele releases and capabilities that come with it. Cheers.